All right, how's it going? I'm Wyatt. I'm Dan. We're back here at the Timonial Rally School, um, and we just wanted to take a minute and show you guys a normal transmission uh, and what's going on inside with you know helical cut gears and synchros and that kind of thing. And this has got a normal open diff and a normal case compared to a set of aftermarket racy sequential transmission. We're going to go through the different things that change inside and out. Um, between a race transmission and a normal Fiesta transmission. So yeah, this is a standard Ford Fiesta transmission that's been removed because I think second gear's uh, missing some pieces of metal on the gear because of bad driving here at the rally school, no problem. Um, but it gives us a nice opportunity to take it apart and sort of look at what, what all's going on. Um, this one isn't completely assembled. We sort of just put it back together so these things wouldn't normally be quite so wobbly, but I think you get the point. Um, what are the basic moving parts inside a transmission like this? Um, so, turn around real quick. We have our shift forks, right? This is when you're pulling on your gear lever, you're moving these things up and down to shift in between one, two, three, four, five, six, reverse. Uh, reverse would be over here on a different stack. This whole stack right here is your one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, smaller ones being fifth, uh, you know, you think about your bicycle, you look at your stack on your bicycle gears, you have the big one that's the easy one to drive that's first and then second, third, fourth, fifth, right? Um, in between each gear here we have little brass synchros and synchros, as they say, synchronize the gears together as you go between one and another, right? It makes for smooth engagement between the two gears. Um, and you don't get the grinding. When you get that grinding or they start to pop out, your synchros might be going on certain gears. Yeah, sort of, I guess, the evolution of automotive transmissions and motorcycle transmissions and that sort of thing, the early days, they were straight cut gears. Um, and what happened is you had to be very careful how you shifted and when you shifted and um, you know some truckers you know I think are still straight cut gears and freight liners and things right. like that and 18 wheelers and stuff and that's where you get the terms double clutching to get into straight cut gears and, and that kind of thing where you don't have synchros to help you out do that a crash box some say um, uh, shifting between those gears Yes, it helps you match it because, you know, matching the speeds of your engine RPM shifting from one gear to the next is a little bit tricky and you can certainly do it. Um, you know, you can take a transmission like this and shift without using the clutch. I think we've got a video on that. Um, but most people daily driving are using the clutch every time they shift and they want nice smooth shifting. Uh, and so that's why you have synchros and that kind of thing. Why are these gears cut at an angle? So they're called helical gears. What they do is allow for a better mesh between them, a quiet mesh between the two gears as they run around. Um, if you've ever driven uh, even some automatics, uh, but reverse gear on manual cars usually whine. And that's because reverse is straight cut and the forward gears are hel helical cut. They also help with uh, engagement, but also mostly because they're quiet. Uh, you ever hear a rally car going by, it's whining as it goes by. That's because most high-end rally cars have those straight cut gears. And those straight cut gears are going to be stronger than these helical gears. Right? You can put a lot more power, you can shift harder without stripping them. These helical gears are very nice and smooth for daily driving, but not, are not as strong. Yeah, I know that in a race car, some of the racing classes, you're not allowed to change these transmissions. Uh, so you're stuck racing with a normal synchro mesh transmission with these helical cut gears. And they last if you're sort of careful with them and you've got to shift a little slower. And, um, you know, it's just not as nice as... Uh, some of the other racing options that are out there. So if you're racing with a normal synchro mesh transmission, you've got to be a little easy on it. Um, and obviously you're probably restricted how much power you can put through it yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, you know, so you don't show up at the drag strip and yeah. blow I mean, these Obviously all with a place. stock VW 1985 Golf or something, you might not need anything more than that. You're not going to blow them up. But you know, something that's putting down 400 wheel horsepower through all the wheels you, you might want to think about going to something a little stronger so. And it's something we see in the rally school as well You know if you're shifting nicely and you're driving around and you have some mechanical sympathy and you know how these parts work uh, You know you could do a whole season or longer with a normal transmission like this mm -hmm. But some drivers you know if you really tried how long would it take you to blow this up? Not long. Yeah, <laughs> a couple dozen shifts and this yeah. thing could be garbage 
Um, so there's that. Take us on a tour of this SEDEV sequential transmission. So moving from here to here, you go from something that's you know 200 bucks or whatever a Fiesta transmission is worth to something that is $20,000. Um, you have a bespoke bell housing and case that is very similar that fits on a Ford. You can see already our straight cut gears, much beefier looking gears than these here, obviously. Uh, can hold a lot more power, can be shifted a lot, you know, more in anger and that kind of thing. But really the, the big difference here is the straight cut gears and the sequential shift. Um, a dog engaged transmission that is not sequential shift would have similar uh, shift forks to this. But, as, but have these dark straight cut gears. Um, a closer look at these, uh, you know, you have your, your brass synchros that help mash these gears together and shift very nicely. In a race transmission um, or a dog engaged transmission, what you have is these straight cut gears with these big lobes or dog ears, as they're called, that grab together and drive the car. Um, what you have for flat shift or doing it without flat shift, uh, you would have to ease off the gas to let these separate and then re-engage at the right moments, kind of like a crash transmission, to engage these big lobes instead of all of these small, nice synchro um, meshed gears here. Uh, that's why we hear them whine, that's why you hear a uh, nice race transmission clunk into gear. They pull into that first gear and it makes this loud clunk as it goes in. Um, but you still have to be kind of nice to these, right? We can, they're very strong, but they do wear out if we are not shifting correctly. These ears, when they go together, if we're kind of slamming into gear a little too hard, we can skip past the gear right, and start knocking the edges off them, not making them uh, as strong as they were and then and having them skip past each other. Yeah, I only know, you know, these things as a driver and not so much as a mechanic. You know, I've rebuilt normal transmissions before. This is still a little bit black magic to me. Um, but yes, um, from having different drivers come through here at the rally school, you know, some guys can make it a whole season on one of these. Uh, and some guys, they're pulling them apart after every race and replacing these dog rings, like you said. So when you do drive with a sequential transmission or you can get uh, a dog box kit for your normal transmission so you'd keep your H pattern but you'd have the straight cut gears. You still need to let off the throttle when you shift. Um, this one is equipped with flat shift meaning you can be full throttle but when it senses there's some tension on that shift lever it'll actually cut the ignition for you. So you as the driver stay full throttle and bah 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 through the gears but it's cutting the ignition on you so that it is taking the pressure off of those things um, and allowing you to do that without just blowing them up. But yeah, very strong and very happy and probably how many seconds a mile quicker? Seconds a mile? Don't know. How, how quick are you per mile? That's a handful. Much quicker know. per shift though. You think these can shift in you know nanoseconds or whatever like uh, you know the Ferraris of today and things like that but you know how quick are you with the, get, the clutch and um, clutch and shifting, and you can put that power through it, right? These are way thicker, way stronger. You can put that power down uh, without really worrying about stripping any gears. Cool. Yeah, um, so th there are sort of shades of gray, normal stock transmission, full on sequential race transmission. Um, something like this, you can probably get different gears for different situations if you wanted, different gear ratios. You know, if you wanted a taller fifth gear for some race or a shorter second gear for some other race, uh, where maybe not so much an option with the standard one, or you might find different models have better, you know, the mm -hmm. third gear from some other thing and put it all together. Um, but yeah, just kind of a look at how these things work and uh, yeah, got anything else? No, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, if you got any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.